comes all the way for two more. I go from being so physically active, playing basketball. Looks for Kara. Evans blocked that three-point attempt. Now I can't walk around five feet to ten feet to clean my room without having chest pain. Evans along three. Got him. I'm scared. And I'm frustrated. I'm ready for this to be over. I really am ready for this to be over. If you have any some new symptom, please right away send a message to us. I'm trying to stay positive. I really am trying to stay positive. But I'm scared. I'm definitely scared. I have focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. It is your kidneys having trouble filtering the waste out of your body, basically. And that's caused because of the scarring of, they're called glomeruli, what your kidney is built of, but it's scarring of the kidney that causes it not to be able to filtrate. So I have built up of waste in my body and it doesn't produce a lot of urine. So they put you on medications to kind of filter that waste out of you with the medications that they take. I'm Clarksville, Tennessee native. Um, I was actually born in Germany to do like everybody else military and it brought us here to Clarksville, Tennessee. So since then I just kind of just threw myself into basketball. You know that's been my whole journey throughout life is to just how to go as far as possible with basketball. I go to James Madison um, on scholarship with basketball and around my sophomore year I'm feeling more fatigued than everybody else and here I am the smallest person on the floor, most likely the fastest and I can't seem to get in shape. On top of having like all these headaches. One with eight rebounds. McLean lost it. Evans ahead of the pack for the easy two. Incredible defense by Don Evans. Very physical with that. So we did blood work and all the tests, and it was no question that I had kidney disease from there, and that was December of 2009. Evans plays both ends. She leads the team in steals. How about At that? the age of 20, I was absolutely devastated. I let myself just sink into the ground completely, like my spirits dropped. And luckily enough, um, I just kind of fought it with my same fighting and competitive spirit like I do basketball. And I decided I have to do whatever I can to do my life and continue my life how I've always planned it. When this story came out with, you know, through Sports Illustrated USA Today that I had kidney disease and I was still playing basketball, a lot of people reached out saying, well, I want to get tested, I want to get tested. Well, Erica found out and she actually went through with the process. And being that she's my first cousin, she obviously was a good match for me. Just like, what do you, you know, what can we do to help? I mean, I honestly never thought that I'd be here the day before getting ready to lose a kidney. <laughs> but it was just kind of like, you know, how do you help? That's always kind of my first answer with anything or anybody. But we um, decided that we're going to go ahead and go home with the transplant. Mm -hmm. um, but. Um, they said, like, now since my body's feeling good, now we just have to wait. You know, you're supposed to schedule two months ahead. Right, but right. they're going to try to push it as fast as possible because I kind of just quit my job and came back. Okay, okay. You know, okay. and so now I'm just here waiting until... I can do it. Okay, good. I don't know. I can't explain what it means to me for her to do something like this for me. I, re I really can't, like, especially for someone who barely knows me. We may have the same bloodline, but she barely knows me, and she's able to be that giving to give me the gift of her body, you know, and like I said, I'm forever in debt to her and we'll be connected for the rest of our lives. I'm just so appreciative. Everybody needs somebody sometimes, no matter how it is, financially, health, somebody to talk to, you know, and it's, I feel like you give and you receive. It's overwhelming at this point. Um, you're full of emotions. You don't, you don't want to break down. Um, but at times you wonder how how can you not you know but I'm just thankful for the situation I know that I'm extremely blessed and I just um, I'm just going to continue to pray that things work out the best for me and Erica both and you know after it's all said and done everything that everybody's done for me doesn't go forgotten you know the people that have been there for me through all these years holding me up basically holding me up I'm forever in debt to them also.
right now I have one functioning kidney, which would be the kidney that Erica gave me, and it's working at full health. Every number that somebody with two healthy kidneys have, that's how my body is functioning right now with this kidney. I'm elated now, you know, because it's something that's behind me that was hanging over my head for almost three years now. So I'm very happy, I'm blessed. Erica's fine, that was a main focus for all of us to make sure that she came through it okay. And we're both fine and we're both living healthily and you know, me more so, my health has gone from zero to a thousand, you know, and I'm just enjoying it and trying to just make the most of, you know, just this. I actually was scared coming out of the surgery because I didn't know what was going to happen next. You know, nobody can kind of prepare you whether your body was going to react to the surgery well or something else was going to happen. And I knew I'd already been through so much and it's basically me starting brand new and this whole new healthy life and it's it's mixed emotions for sure, but you know, more so I was I was happy and I was just excited for what was next. I was a student who actually I enjoyed school, you know, and I I did well in school, but I hung out with so many different types of people and so many people dealing with different things. Students who loved school and students who didn't like it so much. And I saw some, some kids who would struggle and I can look at them and tell them that what you're going through right now, it always, it's always going to seem like the weight of the world is there. Everything is going to seem so difficult, but you have to keep faith. You have to stay strong and just work through it. You know, never give up. I mean, because I've been in a position where I'm like, what do I do next? Why are th is this happening to me? Why do I feel this way? And it feels like everyone else is doing so well. So I would just tell them that, yes, it's going to be hard, but it's going to benefit you in the long run because it's a struggle that happened that you're going to make it through. And once you make it through, you have the world to face and you'll be prepared for it. And for me, I have the ability to reach out to people and I've had a great experience for what it's worth with this whole surgery, this whole ordeal, to be able to use it to my benefit and use it to other people's benefit. Anywhere I go, whether it be JMU or here in Clarksville, people associate me with basketball and it's become a part of me and it's a huge part of me. But because right now I can't do it with my health, I can't, right now I need to focus on getting my body in order, making sure my health is completely fine before I move on back to that if I decide. Um, so I still have that open as an opportunity, but as of right now I'm planning to head to LA in January for film school uh, at the New York Film Academy and just do what I've always loved. It was my love even before basketball acting, so I'll just be pursuing that and Maybe basketball comes back around, maybe it doesn't, but whatever I do, I'm just gonna do something to try to enjoy this new life, my new health, and whatever life has to offer. For me, this is a start to a new beginning. I'm just ready for life's new endeavors, and I'm thankful for all the support and everything that everyone's done for me to support me, the doctors for helping me, it's been great.